But all I have is stat questions, so <laughs> that is Jack. John, we can talk seriously about getting the 100th win for this senior class. Uh, it feels amazing. It got on our home court, held the team to the lowest point total of the year, which is just incredible. It's hard to do. Um, we really pride ourselves in our defense this year, and um, being able to do that and get the 100th win tonight is just an amazing feeling. Uh, one other question about the 100 wins, knowing that the last, what is it, eight years in a row, Mike, something like that, I mean, a bunch of years leading up to this have gotten to 100. Yeah, and is there pressure as you're coming through the ranks thinking, hey, we got to get there too? You don't know. You don't think about it. You just go out there and play Bowling Green basketball, and that's what we've been taught to do since our freshman year. You just look up to the upperclassmen, and you just keep going, just keep playing. And um, from being a freshman till now, I learned so much about about winning defense, offense, and um, to get the hundred win tonight was just an amazing, amazing feat. Will you talk a little bit about the defense, especially in the first half, compared to the second half? I mean, was this a blistering halftime discussion about defense, or? Um, no, not really. We just we just knew that uh, coming in here, we wanted to we, we wanted to hold them lower than what we, we did last time, and we ended up doing that by one, which is really cool to do. And um, so we just talked, you know, let's try and hold them to let's try and hold them to 39, like we did last time, and then we ended up holding 38, which is just awesome. Well, and what what did you guys do differently? I mean, was there a specific plan set in place to get there? Um, we just we just tried to eliminate their second chance points and get the get the rebound right away, and. Um, we pride ourselves in eliminating team second chance points because then that, that's a that's a killer because then they don't get that offensive rebound they don't get a put back. Do you think that the offense in the second half because you were so efficient offensively to get it rolling did, did that help the defense kind of get going in the second half? Um, I'm I'm gonna have to go opposite on that. I'm gonna say the defense goes to the offense. So when we get a stop and we got a lot of transition points in the second half and that that came off of our turnovers quick rebounds, and then just ran out for transition layups. Um, Kent State had a lot of shot clock violations this game, so do you attribute that to like, your good defense, or just them yeah, not really being able to run the offense at all? Um, you know, both. They, they were looking for something that wasn't there, and um, we, we stopped we stopped and we knew, we knew what was coming today. We really went over their, their plays, two-day prep, and um, I'm going to say we were prepped really well. I, we knew their plays inside and out, which is which is really credit to, credit to the coaching staff on that one. Will you talk a little bit, in the second half you got to sit down along with the other seniors and watch the young, younger players play. I mean, what, can you just kind of, behind the scenes, what's kind of going on while you're watching that? Um, it's cool to see, you know, like here's the, here comes the new group, uh, Sunday senior night, so it's, it's been going by so quick. So um, sitting there and watching them play and then like, learning what we've been doing the whole time and then uh, seeing them try and do things that we've been doing. It's just really cool to just see them try and rise, rise to the occasion. Do you give any advice or do you let coach do that? What to the younger <laughs> players? You know, That's before. coach. Uh, I try and make the actions speak for themselves, so hopefully, hopefully something goes there. But uh, other than that, coach is on that. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about the emotions of senior day coming up? Like, is that something that you look forward to your whole career? Um, I don't know, it's just crazy. Like, they've been talking about it all week. Like, you guys gonna cry on senior night? And it's like, oh, I don't know. I had, it's not the time yet. So, um, we had to get this win first. This was what we were looking for. And now it's coming up. So it's it's weird. It's a weird feeling. So they came in 3-3 three three in their last six. Uh, they are playing extremely well. Uh, we had to be extremely focused at both ends of the floor tonight uh, to be successful. And even though we took a early lead, I never felt comfortable in the first half. I thought a big play uh, before halftime was Jillian Hatfield's three-pointer that she got fouled, and then offensive rebound put back by Alexis Rogers. So a five-point possession uh, was a big turning point because that's a Kent State team that shot 71% of the first half. And in my opinion, their magic number was 62 points uh, for them to be successful. They're three and one, I believe, when they've scored 62 or more uh, this season. But uh, this is a team, a Kent State, that's been playing extremely well in February. And I thought our kids did a much better job in the second half defensively, uh, forcing contested shots and forcing shots at the end of the shot clock. Um, 
and that was a big key in the game, as well as uh, we, we had a lot of different kids step up and make, make shots uh, for, for us inside and outside, and we got to the line. I mean, we shot 15 of 22, and they were four of eight, and that's a, another difference maker, in my opinion. But this was a tale of two, two halves. I mean, we couldn't get a stop in the first half. Kent State shot 71% in the first half, and now they, in the second half, uh, they shoot 15% and only score 12, 12 points. But this, like I said, this was a, a Kent State team that was playing extremely well uh, coming into the game, had a lot of team chemistry, in my opinion. Uh, had blown out Miami in their last game at home, and, and as I said, they're playing well. So I, I was proud of our effort at, at both ends of the floor, especially in the second half. Will you talk a little bit about your senior class getting their 100th win today? They've played extremely well. Uh, they are an extremely loyal group. Um, I'm very proud of them as a unit, uh, proud of them that I, I was helped recruit them along with Kurt Miller, Brandy Poole, and Kevin Ecker, and they're being rewarded for all their hard work. Um, now they've had a couple different coaching staffs. That's not easy. They've had two head coaches as well, um, but I feel that we've had a lot of consistency in the system, consistency in some of our mantras and what in our beliefs, and they, they have stepped up to the plate and, and really risen to the challenge this year, and I'm, I'm really proud of their hard work and their loyalty to the program. You touched on a little bit. We talked a little bit about more about the defense in the second half, though. You mentioned the contesting shots and then forcing shots late in the shot clock. Was it, can you, were there other factors that helped you guys defensively second half? I thought our team did a good job of their preparation the past two days. Uh, we tried to literally memorize Kent State's plays and Kent State's play calls. Uh, we wanted to beat them to the defensive spot, uh, but this is a team that uh, we, they can score in a variety of ways. Um, with CeCe Shannon and Montia Johnson, I think that's a very strong uh, post combination, and they, they can score very well in, inside, and we knew we had to uh, make them shoot tough jumpers inside as well, or tough turnarounds in, inside, but uh, again, our, our team was extremely focused. Um, at, from the very get-go, we scored on our opening possession off of a play we, we drew up at halftime, and then they were very had a very concerted and determined effort defensively. Knowing that you really wanted to kind of beat them with their own plays or, or kind of memorize their plays, did that lead to some frustration with the defense in the first half? No, they, they were making good shots. Uh, they were scoring in, at the end of the shot clock, yet they were scoring on splitting our defensive uh, personnel. We would hedge, they would split the hedge and our defender, and they were able to get pull-ups on the block or get uh, to the rim. And I thought we did a better job of making them shoot contested jumpers outside of the paint. And they had six points in the paint in the first game, in the first half. They, I believe they had 20. Uh, and they ended up with 26 total tonight. At this time of the year, and you have to turn around and play again on Sunday with the short prep, how important was it to get the best players in at, in the second half? Well, actually at this time of year, it's I'm looking at the health status of one through nine. Um, and we only have nine healthy bodies and I need us to all be healthy. Uh, we've got a, a recent black eye. Deborah kind of tweaked her ankle today in, in the game, so anytime somebody goes down, I'm kind of holding my breath. Uh, we have curtailed our practices, where we're doing even less contact against each other, and I, I, we just need to be in uh, the, the best health we can uh, coming down, down the stretch. But with that said, I, I was pleased that we got good minutes from, from everybody, and we had very balanced minutes and balanced scoring tonight.